In this video, you will learn the criteria to become an accredited investor, how to find out if you are one, and the screening process investment managers use to confirm accredited investor status. A person with an income over 200000 in the past two years, or a couple with a combined income surpassing 300000 with a reasonable expectation of maintaining that level of income in the current year, or a person who has a net worth at the time of purchase exclusive of the value of their primary property exceeds $1 million as an individual or in joint ownership with their spouse. According to the SEC's press release from August 26th of 2020, the addendum allows investors to qualify as accredited investors based on defined measures of professional knowledge, experience, or certifications in addition to the existing tests for income of net worth. The following are now included in the SEC's definition of accredited investors. Those who possess particular professional credentials, titles, or certifications, individuals who work for a private fund as knowledgeable employees, and investment advisors with the SEC and state registration. Accredited investors now include people who hold a Series 7, Series 65, or Series 82 license. The SEC can continue to include certifications and destinations while also encouraging the public to suggest new credentials, designations, or certificates for consideration. In relation to a private fund, employees who are regarded as knowledgeable employees are now also regarded as accredited investors. Additionally, the SEC has expanded the definition to encompass a wide range of organizations including Indian tribes, government bodies, funds, and entities organized under the law of foreign countries that own investments as defined in Rule 2A-51-1. B, under the Investment Company Act, in excess of $5 million, and that was not formed from the specific purpose of investing in the securities offered. Other organizations that might be eligible include limited liability companies with assets of $5 million or more, exempt reporting advisors, investment advisors registered with the SEC and or state and rural business investment firms. An individual should make a personal balance sheet by deducting the entire number of obligations from the total assets in order to assess whether they are an accredited investor. As you can see, Alan meets the requirements for accredited investor status as shown in the example because his net worth exceeds $1 million. However, because the additional responsibilities connected to their home, neither Brian nor Carla qualify. With a $100,000 home equity line, Brian's liabilities increase and his net worth falls below. 1 million. Clara's underwater mortgage, on the other hand, raises her liabilities and reduces her net worth. No certification is given, and no official organization or institution certifies an investor's accreditation. However, the SEC has mandated that anyone selling to accredited investors must follow a variety of various procedures in order to establish the status as of September 2013. It is no longer acceptable for someone to just inform a company that they are qualified or tick a box. Those who believe they are qualified can go to a fund and inquire about possible investments. The issuer of securities will now administer a questionnaire to an eligible accredited investor in order to confirm the ownership of the assets indicated on the balance sheet. It is also likely that the questionnaire will demand the attachment of financial statements and information from other accounts in order to analyze any debts owed by a person applying for accredited status businesses are likely to review their credit history those who have based their eligibility on annual income will probably need to provide tax returns w-2 forms and other pay related documentation People may also take into account letters from reviews performed by CPAs, tax lawyers, investment brokers, or advisors. If you are outside of the United States, there are a few clarifications for accredited investors. Some nations like Singapore, Australia, and Canada have accreditation requirements that are similar to those in the United States in terms of net worth and income, while other nations have different standards. Check to see what your standards are in your country. There are three main criteria to decide if a person is an accredited investor. For instance, in the EU and Norway, the first is a qualitative test that determines whether the person is qualified to make their own investing decisions by assessing their skills, knowledge, and expertise. The second is a qualitative test where the applicant must satisfy two requirements. Has engaged in big size transactions on the relevant market 
on average 10 times per quarter during the past four quarters. Worked in the financial field for at least one year and has a financial portfolio worth more than 500,000 euros. The client must express in writing their desire to be handled professionally and the company they choose to do business with must inform them of the safeguards they must forfeit. Other nations like Switzerland and India may not expressly state their requirements and do demand that one first counsel with local legal counsel to determine whether they are an accredited investor. Being an accredited investor gives you a competitive financial advantage over others. Being an accredited investor gives you access to investments that people with less wealth do not have. This in turn will boost your financial situation. These investments may offer higher rates of return, greater diversification, and a variety of other benefits that accelerate the accumulation of wealth. And if you want to learn more about wealth and creating wealth, subscribe to the channel. Being allowed to invest in hedge funds is one of the most straightforward benefits of being an accredited investor. Hedge funds are often only available to accredited investors since they have a high minimum investment requirement, large potential risks, and occasionally negative returns. Hedge funds have struggled to outperform the market in recent years, although many have traditionally done well, giving their clients extraordinarily significant returns in a short amount of time. The more money you put into investments, the more likely you're going to get a higher return back. The majority of investments that call for a person to be an accredited investor are high risk. In order to achieve their objective of outperforming the market, several funds adopt techniques that carry a higher risk. Another drawback is that most investments have high minimum investment amounts. It won't be enough to only put a few hundred or even a few thousand dollars into an investment. To participate in investments intended for accredited investors, you will need to put in a few hundred thousand dollars or a few million dollars. This is a significant amount of money to lose if your investment fails. Hence why you have to be making $200,000 a year or have a net worth of $1 million. Additionally, investments made by accredited investors come with higher management fees. These primarily take the form of performance fees and can range from 15 to 20% per investment. The ability to access your investment funds is another drawback of being an accredited investor. You can't withdraw your money at any time. For instance, if you are using an electronic platform to buy a few stocks online, your money may be locked up for a few years. When you invest in a hedge fund, there is a lot of liquidity associated with being an accredited investor. So if you need cash quick, you can't always get it right away. What happens if you falsify your accreditation as an investor? The fund or investment vehicle is typically at fault if you falsely represent yourself as a qualified investor because it is their job to evaluate your credentials. Non-accredited investors may also be entitled to recession in some jurisdictions. This implies that an investor might claim that they were non-accredited investors the entire time and get their money back if they choose to withdraw their funds early. In spite of this, it is never a smart idea to supply fabricated records to an investment vehicle in order to make an investment. Doing so could land you in legal trouble in a variety of ways down the road. What amounts may a qualified investor invest? An accredited investor may invest an unlimited amount of their own funds associated with their investment. Having said that, each deal or each fund can have unique restrictions and ceilings on the sum of money they will accept as investments for investors. Investors that meet specific criteria for income, qualifications, or net worth are considered accredited. They are frequently rich people, which that's the path we're on and why you should subscribe to the channel. Accredited investors have the option to invest in non-registered securities offered by businesses, including venture capital firms, private equity funds, hedge funds, angel investors, and a list of others. Accredited investors now have access to rare and constrained investments that come with specific yields and other benefits. Additionally, they have some serious negatives, including high risk and high minimum investment requirements. Companies must follow a variety of strict SEC standards in order to verify an investor's status who claims to be an accredited investor. If you meet the criteria for an accredited investor, it can be worthwhile for you to look for these specific investment opportunities that could accelerate the growth of your wealth.